Hello, welcome to the basic Voyager tutorial. Today I'll be walking you through all of the things that you will frequently have to do in the Voyager circulation system. We'll begin by checking out materials, which is the most fun part of being at a library. Go up to the charge button here, and you scan in the patron's barcode. All patrons should have either a Berea College ID or a Berea College library card in order to check out any materials. Once you have their patron record pulled up, uh, you can start scanning in the items. So it'll display the title here, the item's barcode, and then the due date. Notice that each of these items have different due dates. Horns is a book and has a 21-day loan period for the standard 21-day patron, whereas Aquila and the Bee is a media item and only has a 7-day loan period. So you need to double-check the due date in the system before stamping the item for the patron. This will ensure that they know the correct due date and don't accrue any fines. To check an item back in, click on the Discharge button. Make sure that your cursor is in the item barcode box and go ahead and scan. The item that I just scanned is a new book. So every time you discharge it, it'll come up with this circulation alert notifying you that it has a temporary location. When that happens, push OK, and then pay attention to the location code here. That'll tell you where the item needs to be shelved. These books usually have a sticker on the call number as well to help you identify where it needs to go and how long it should be there. Once you've discharged an item, it'll display the same information as when you check it out, the title, barcode, due date, and it'll also tell you here in the fines box if it was overdue. Books get 25 cents per day overdue, and media items are a dollar per day they're overdue. And my discharge box may look a little different than yours. Um, I have this icon here that allows me to do a backdate discharge, which modifies the day that you're discharging the book to. Um, usually this space is blank, so you don't need to worry about that. Charging items to a faculty member is slightly different than charging it to a standard 21-day patron. So if you have a staff or faculty member, they'll have strange loan periods. A normal book will have 120 days. I know, it's crazy. I wish I could do that too. Media items will have seven days, just like a normal 21-day patron. The children's books only have 21 days. So here this imaginary faculty member has checked out three items with three different due dates. So make sure that you check the due date again before stamping the items. Now we're going to move on to searching patrons and looking at their patron record. To search for a patron, go up to this patron tab here. You can search by name or by barcode. So if the patron is standing in front of you and they have their ID, you can just go ahead and scan in. On the patron record, you can see if they have anything checked out, and it would display it here if they have any fines, which this patron does not, if they have anything on hold, and any other notes that there may be about their record. To search for a patron, go to the Patron tab, and then just type in their name. I am pulling up one of our pseudo-patrons for Interlibrary Loan. When the Interlibrary Loan Department needs a book to send out to another library, we check it out under this title. So you can see here the Interlibrary Loan has 304 items checked out. 
you can click on this box and it will pull up all of their charged items. So here you can see the title, call number, the location, the item type, barcode, due date, and the status. So it will also tell you if an item is overdue. In the status box it will say overdue as of what date. So from here you can get the item info, you can print this whole page of charges for the patron or for your own purposes. You can discharge the items, you can modify the due date, or renew. You can also post fines from this record. Here it'll tell you how much the patron has accrued in overdue fines or in other fees. If you click on the dollar sign, it'll pull up all of those transactions. This item, for example, is a lost item fee of $50. Anytime a patron loses an item, it costs them $50 flat out. That accounts for the cost of replacement and all of the man hours that it took to look for that book. Because before we declare it lost, we look for it for a very long time, making sure that it just hasn't been misplaced. Um, sometimes there may be other fines here that are $0.25 cents or a dollar, something small, and those are just overdue fines from the item being late. So to post a fine, go here to post and enter the amount that the patron is paying. So it may just be $2 that day. We only accept cash uh, at the circulation desk. So the method is usually cash. There are exceptions, however, uh, at the end of the semester we do uh, a program called Food for Fines, which is where patrons can bring in cans of food to donate to the local um, food bank and every can that they bring in is a dollar off their account. If you're doing a donation then you would select food for fines instead of cash. But for now we're pretending that we're paying cash. So if all of this checks out then you push OK. There's one last thing I'd like to show you about the patron record. Here are any notes that there may be about the patron. Sometimes it's something like they need to renew their Berea College ID before they can check out any more items, something along those lines. It's just to let circulation know something about this patron if there have been any issues. This box will tell you how many items they have borrowed historically, how many lost items, and so on and so forth. That's always interesting to know. You can also look at the patron's information on these tabs. For example, if you need to send them some kind of email or a letter letting them know that an item's overdue or that they have an item on hold, you can check their address here. And then sometimes if they're Berea College students or faculty or staff, then their email will be in here as well. So that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to check the Intermediate Voyager tutorial next to learn about the things that you still need to know, but you just don't do as often. Thanks for watching.